let me control my body. Let me control for our quick, and then I'll finish. These people are arguing about abortion, and no wonder a well financed PR campaign to link reproductive choice to genocide in the African American community is ongoing, and it's doing just what it was intended to do. It's sparking debate. I mean, my mom wasn't married. Property, but it's about choices. Bro. This effort, driven largely by a group called Priests for Life, seeks to equate civil rights with fetal rights and to roll back reproductive choice. But in this pre-election season, it has the added value to conservatives of potentially splitting a key Democratic voting bloc. No constituency has been a firmer supporter of President Obama than African American voters. I think that they're trying to appeal to that section of the African-American community that would say, oh, well, I don't know if I support abortion, so let me see if I could bring myself to vote for a Republican this time. They're trying to drive a wedge. We're in a position now where possibly black voters could be peeled away from the Democratic base because they feel that in order to better serve their community, they need to vote for uh, anti-choice candidates who claim to want to save and preserve black families and the black race, but their agenda is something completely and entirely different from that. It would be hard to convince me that white conservatives who haven't shown any particular interest in saving black babies to date suddenly think that they're the leaders of the crusade for black babies. It isn't the first time that so-called cultural issues have been used to try to divide the Democratic base. In 2004 and 2008, it was rights for LGBT people, including marriage, which stood debate in California and Ohio. The current campaign, focusing on abortion in communities of color, is spread across 10 states in the South and the Southwest. I think each state will be different, and each state will require a counter campaign. Um, but I don't think they will be successful um, in what they're attempting um, to do. They haven't been successful in the past with these inflammatory campaigns when um, we've been able to show the truth behind um, what they're attempting to do. And it doesn't ring true with women's lives. And legislators shouldn't think that this is the key to their reelection or a way to um, pass further restrictions on abortion because when based on lies and fabrication, it doesn't make um, for good public policy. I do not think that it's going to have that much effect upon the black vote because there are so many issues that are so much more important to us in the black community, such as jobs, the economy. But whether or not there's an electoral impact from campaigns like these, there's certainly a community impact. You cannot save black babies by attacking black women. It just doesn't work. And unfortunately, the anti-abortion movement likes to portray this picture of the selfish, irresponsible, careless black woman who's irresponsibly having sex, talk about falling into stereotypes about black women, <laughs> and then somehow using abortion as birth control. Because that's the other thing that's so ironic about what they preach, is that if we choose to have an abortion, we're criticized. But white America will equally criticize us if we choose to have a child <laughs> you know, and accuse us of overbreeding, overpopulating the earth, not controlling our children, ruining the educational system. I mean, so we're damned if we do, damned if we don't. People fighting for reproductive justice are doing their best to counter with voter education projects, polling, and opinion research. So we want to know more about what our community thinks, but we want to be proactive. So wherever these people go around the country, putting up these billboards or sponsoring these, this legislation, there's a group of organized black women saying, trust black women. We can make the decisions for ourselves and our bodies, and we do not need you. Thank you, white folks, telling us what to do. And the church will have a critical role, too. In lots of places, not much happens without the approval of the local pastor. It's really aimed at the black church because they know the black church is very conservative 
and 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 possibly could could under, could, could support them in this. Some of the black ministers, but uh, the progressive black ministers and the younger black ministers are very much aware of uh, of this tactic. The hope of the South is the fact that they have some very young thoughtful black ministers, and I believe that they are going to counter this. They are going to uh, stand up, and they are going to inform their congregations that this is uh, only a ruse in order to, to, to get them to uh, support the, uh, the agenda of the conservative people in this country. Is there a deeper motive, too? It's a movement that has been delegitimated by its violence, by its murders, its bombings, its assassinations, its, its, its violent tactics. That's what most people think of when they think of the anti-abortion movement. They don't think of peaceful protesters trying to project and protect a moral cause. And so I think they're desperate for moral legitimacy right now. Critics are confident that the drive to equate fetal rights with civil rights will fail to vilify choice and to split the black vote. There are people who are in power who don't always have our best interests at heart. To play close to that line for the sake of political gain because there's no genuine interest in the community, there are no solutions that are being offered, just, you know, the man's out to get you. Uh, I think that black people are sophisticated enough and black women are sophisticated enough to see through that. But at the end of the day, black people have figured out how to survive. Black women in particular have figured out how to survive and to nurture their communities. They've done that, they do that, and they will continue to do that. But even if this particular campaign has no impact on these midterms, will these type of tactics disappear? They win by losing if they can get the majority of the American people to believe that sex selection abortions is a problem in this country, which they're not, and that race selection abortions happen in this country, when they don't. So it's that classic anti-abortion strategy of creating something out of thin air and then convincing the American public that they have to put a stop to it. It really is about a small clique of white men trying to control the fertility of all women in this country. The future of this debate in many ways is in the, is in the hands of women under 35. Our role is to make sure that we continue to protect and expand the reproductive rights and freedoms of our community and women as a whole. And then there's also a huge amount of responsibility that is in the hands of the women who come before us. Women like Loretta Ross and her generation of sheroes that lived their lives prior to Roe v. Wade because we need them, we need to stand on their shoulders so that we can create a strategy moving forward that really does help us educate people as necessary but create a strategy that is sustainable and long-term for generations to come. While my generation may not have women dying in back alley abortion rooms, we still have women and children dying slow deaths because they don't have the health care that they need, they don't have the economic justice that they need, and they're dying invisible faces at the bottom of a well that people aren't, aren't strong enough or courageous enough to name.